everybody. Welcome to On the Road with the Archery Shack. We're headed to the ATA show. I'm Jeremy, as you know. I'm TJ. We're riding up the road in Kentucky. Headed to Indianapolis to the ATA show. Trying to not crash. <laughs> Made we, a pretty good time. We drunk. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> no. That's tomorrow night. <laughs> we ain't drunk. We are not drunk. I do have my Chick-fil-A cup, though. We had some of the Lord's chicken. Did have to wait quite a lengthy line, but they got us out. Oh, yeah. Somewhere in North Carolina. Chick-fil-A is always good about getting in and out. But, uh... We are headed to the ATA show. Figured we would update everybody with a little video podcast ordeal here. Um, so we just cruising. Cruising through Kentucky. Got a couple hours still left. We just got into Kentucky, so we probably got like five hours left. But um, wanted to talk about a little bit of ATA stuff, let you know what we're going to do. Our plan is this uh, the podcast that came out keeping up with them yesterday talked about us going to the ATA this one will be coming out on Thursday morning if you're listening to it as it comes out and then Friday and Saturday morning we'll have them coming out with stuff we've seen at the show and talking about that yep so uh, keep up with that and then we'll do a recap and have it come out next Wednesday like our normal podcast so that'll be cool Thank y'all for listening, but uh, TJ, TJ was talking about earlier, if you got anything you see on Archery Talk, Facebook, Instagram, and you want us to look at it, there's a good chance we could miss it because this place is so big. So let us know on Facebook or on YouTube comments or somewhere. You can text us 843-560-9898. Just let us know, hey, look at the new site from whoever or look at what do you think of this bow whatever and uh, we'll look at it and maybe on the recap video at, at least by then we'll talk about it we'll yeah. give us a list of stuff y'all ask about but be sure to put it you know if you have to send it to on facebook send it to the archery shack uh messenger yeah or just uh, comment on this video the video or the text line because we'll that's the three major ones we'll be looking at while we're up here but the place is so big there's been times where we've missed stuff, you know, and pretty big stuff because we just either didn't have time to get to it or we walked past it looking at something else. So we're going up here. Uh, it's a yearly thing. If you've never heard of the ATA show, it's a it's a show for archery retailers. It's where we can go and look at and handle all the new stuff that's out, shoot the bows from every manufacturer side by side, and then place an order here and get a little bit of a discount or free shipping there's always some little gimmick to get you to go ahead and order it so my biggest thing is being able to handle the stuff yeah <laughs> and when people come in the shop i can be like yep i've shot that bow and here's what i think or yeah i've shot that release i liked it i didn't like it we can give you an honest opinion yeah you know it's just different stuff like true ball they've got three or four new releases that i know of you know, last year they came out with the Execute. This year they come out with the Execution, which is a single jaw, kind of like your Beast or your Fang release, but it's the higher end, geared more, I ain't going to say geared more towards a tournament archer, but if you like all the adjustability, trigger travel, yep. everything like that, you know, I'm interested to get my hands on that release anyway. Oh, yeah. I'd like to shoot it. Um, and that, what's that other one called? The Go-To, I think it is. It's a handheld, but you still pull the trigger with your index finger. And I've seen pictures of it just a few days ago. I don't think I would want it, <laughs> but I'd like to shoot it because yeah. it might change my mind. So it, it looks unique. And you know, as we talked about on previous podcasts, stuff like when the Whisker Biscuit come out, you know, we're like, ah, that ain't gonna work, da 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 but then we actually try it, oh, yeah. and it changes our mind, and so, you know. We, when we, even with our, if we initially think this is junk, we're gonna try it out for you. Yep. We're gonna give her a test. Yep. Um, you know, we've talked about Vapor Trail on a few podcasts. They got that new Gen 7X. Yep. And, you know, it came out with a Gen 7 last year. I think I'm not a hundred percent, 
but I seen where they make a adapter because I think on the Gen 7 you can only run it from the top limb. I think with the Gen 7X it already has that adapter where you can run it from your top limb or your bottom limb. So I think they made an adapter for the Gen 7 where you could convert it to a bottom gotcha. to the bottom limb. I'm sure we'll order some of them. Yeah, that rest, that rest is sharp. It is. It's, it's real sharp. Rubber molded and the whole yep. nine yards. They don't make a lot of racket. It's a limb driven rest. It's, it's just nice. And the prime bows that we sell have already got that axle on the ends of the limb where it's, it's made for a limb driver cord. Yeah. So you don't have to tie it around the limb. It's, it's well thought out. And you know, like the Allen Company, they, I think they're releasing eight new products. Yep. Uh, last chance has got her had her in interest peak since November. They coming out with a, some new product that's supposed to I don't know what it's supposed to do, but they done got everybody's interest peaked on it. Uh, they keep putting out a blurry picture, yeah. And the only thing we can come up with is George Riles, who has is real tight with Last Chance, is doing a couple arrow building seminars in their booth, so that tells me it's something arrow related. And the two, the two most common thoughts are it's either an arrow saw or it's some sort of an automated fletching device. So we'll see. Yep, we'll see on that. We'd love to be coming back to one. Might be. Woo. And then in breaking news this morning, we've seen on our way up here. Breaking news, folks. Brian Pigman Quaka has signed with PSE. He, I just looked yesterday because he, something on facebook came up on from him you know, on my feed and i thought is he still with obsession and i went back and there was no mention of obsession for a while he did have an obsession on a december the 12th post but it, he didn't hashtag obsession and it was just a brief glimpse of him shooting it out of a blind and i thought something's up and now he, we know we got in the car about an hour up the road from leaving and tj's like you ain't gonna believe this and i was like really Yep. And uh, we talked about on the last podcast, John Dudley's left Hoyt. The biggest rumor now is that he is going to PSC. We, yep. don't, we don't know that yet. We'll know it uh, hopefully the next uh, podcast or video we do on here. We'll know. But rumor is, is he's going to PSC and coming out with a John Dudley knock-on carbon boat. Yep. So we'll see if that proves to be true or if that's just internet rumor. Yep. Got to love good internet rumor. There's a lot of them. Yep. I think that could do a lot for PSC, getting all these people, you know, like, uh, well, you, you know, we talked with Dudley, you know, Dudley's been tight with Hoyt for 15, 15 years, so it's, it could be, you know, I know he's friends with Joe Rogan yep. and a bunch of other guys, so I wonder if it, he may not pull them from Hoyt to PSC. It's possible. You know, well, like Rogan has no contracts. I mean, yeah. he, he's just like a celebrity that bow hunts. Yep. Donald Trump Jr. I know that uh, that John uh, Dudley sets up his bows. He could become a PSC man. He could. Uh, there's all kind of stuff that can happen. I'm trying to think. You know. So it's you know for us only be seven days into the new year. A lot of changing. A lot of changing right off the bat and. You know, I'm I, curious how much average Joe could care less about any of these people. But the people that are in the know with archery, it may affect their purchase. You know, I know like Cameron Haynes, for example, we've got several people that come in the shop that shoot what he shoots because they follow him. Yep. Uh, you know, so with Dudley and whoever that may move around, well, well they, who, who would, who would, in the next year if you were buying a bow i know people would put a lot of they'd at least go shoot that bow yeah but i think more than we realize people would possibly buy that particular model because john dudley shooting well here you know here's an example a couple of years back when levi left elite to yep. go back to matthews yep i mean and i downplayed that i was like he didn't have nothing to do with elite this ain't nothing when he left Elite, Elite started hurting. Yeah. And they they are just on the back end of kind of coming out of that, yeah. in, my, in my opinion. So and uh, let's just go ahead and get... Disclaimer. <laughs> disclaimer alert. We, we don't want to get our shop burned down again. 
but these are just rumors we hear and opinions of our own. Um, Disclaimer over. Yep. Um, <laughs> Montech has a new broadhead. They just emailed it, a picture of it to me. Nice. It's a solid, no no vent, no vents in the blade like normal. So it's a new Montech. I think it's called the M3. Or yeah. M, so I don't know. But uh, I know they redesigned. Was it the dead meat that they? Something. Four, something, four blades or something. Something like that. Uh, Who knows? Yeah. Broadheads, I hadn't heard anything else except that. Um, I'd like to know what Grim Reaper's going to do. And of course, Rage is a big one. What they're yeah. going to do. They'll do something. Yep. They'll, they'll call it something fancy and charge $60 a pack. <laughs> yeah. But uh, I'm interested to see what Dead Ringer does, too. You know, yeah. they've always had some neat looking broadheads and some neat looking packaging. Yep. Agreed. They got that big old two. They got all kind of big broadheads yeah. that are neat, you know. Um, then they have, or was that Schwacker, the one that was called the Freak Nasty? No, that was Dead Ringer. It was. It just sounds catchy. Sounds badass. Yeah. What are you shooting a Freak Nasty? <laughs> You're like, no. What are you shooting? Um, I'm trying to think. Bows. Somebody will give it a zinger, I'm sure, and come out with a bow at the show. Yeah. That could be that knock-on bow we heard about for PSE, or it could be something different. Could be. The Chinese bows are coming, the die bow. I've seen some shops carrying it, and I do want to shoot one. And the rumor is that it's going to retail for between five and $600, and it has pretty good quality. Uh, what I read was, and I, don't get me wrong, I mean, I don't want to buy nothing from China either, but what I read was... It feels similar to a thousand dollar American made bow, but it's going to retail for five, six hundred dollars. And as much as everybody's going to, want to say, oh no, I ain't buying it it's from China, if we had 10 of those in the shop, we'd sell all 10 of them faster than we'd sell an American American made bow because everybody wants to save money. Yep. And I don't know. It is what it is, but uh, I want to shoot it. If it shoots yeah. like a piece of shit, then whatever. But if it shoots as good as some people said, I'd just be curious to know, would people buy it? Would they not buy it? I, I know what my gut feeling says, and that is if it shoots decent, it's a third, you know, a third cheaper, they're gonna buy it, so. I don't know, that, that's a hard one to, and you know, that's, that's a hard one to decide what we need to do as a shop, because that's the reason we come to this show, is to place our orders and get things through the year. And you know, as we said before, if you see something, that you want us to look at, send it to us that way we can in case we miss it. You know, there's been years that we we bought stuff, we've ordered stuff that we thought were going to be a huge hit, and it ended up being a total flop. Yeah, and that can hurt. That can be a couple grand yeah. that I have to eat, you know. And then on the flip side of that, we look at something like, I don't know about this, I don't know if this is going to take off or if this is any good, and we don't order it. And then it'd be the greatest, yeah. the latest, greatest, strangest thing to the archery world. There's a loud truck. Yeah, Jake Freak. But yeah, so be curious to see what comes out. Rumor has it there is possibly a new Garmin site coming out. Yeah. Because they discounted some of the old ones. Um, I know we mentioned Allen. They coming out with, you know, when we get these emails from these companies, it's either just a brief, it's a picture with maybe a brief description. Um, but they said something about some ergonomic tools for the archery side of it. And, you know, for us in the shop, we love tools that help us, okay. you know. So, I think a lot of these companies are starting to go to a, like a simpler install or easier ways to work on stuff. Yeah. Well, and I think part of that is because people are doing it at home. I do too. You know, they don't want to read a dang North Korean <laughs> rocket manual to try to figure out how to put in a peep site. They just want to have it done. Yeah. Uh, you know, especially they released that new, it's not the podium peep. I can't remember what it's called, but it's similar to a podium peep, but it's geared towards the hunting side. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and most people know the podium peep. It's got where you can buy apertures that screw into the peep sight to change your size from like a 3 16th to a quarter, something like that. So you don't actually have to change yeah. 
the whole peep housing or buy a reducer if you wanted to go smaller with a smaller lens or clarifier or verifier. Uh, you can actually, the lenses or clarifiers and verifiers are all the same size. You just buy the aperture to reduce your peep size or fill the view on the peep size. And that saves money in the long run because you, yeah. you had to buy what size peep you wanted plus that size in the clarifier. If you wanted to change, you screwed. Because you had to buy the peep and, yeah. and the clarifier. If you bought a 1 16th peep and was like, this is a little too small, then you're going to spend another 50 or 60 bucks getting all that crap again. So I think they make a kit with the peep side, so many clarifiers and so many Aperture. Apertures. Yeah. And don't hold me to it, but it's like 175 bucks. But you get, you know, a selection of stuff with it. And that's including the peep. Yeah. So in the long run, you know, if you had to sit there and buy three peep sites, well, you know, you done saved some money right there. Black Eagle and Conquest, which is the same company. Conquest is their stabilizers, Black Eagle's the arrows. They're coming out with a quiver. Yep. Um, and I don't know I don't know what the features of it are. I just we just seen a little brief picture of it. But I'm sure if they're coming out with it, there's gotta be something fancy with it. So we'll look at that. Uh, they come out with a revelation arrow a couple two months ago, but I've yet to see them in person. And it's geared toward like a field archer. So yeah. I don't this is probably not something we'll stop. It's like a three hundred dollar a dozen arrow yeah. for field archer so i don't i don't see us needing to stock them but i do want to look at them and play with them and i think with those they're only selling tungsten tips and them i think i wonder if we snap one in half if they'll get pissed <laughs> sorry folks um hadn't heard anything else on the quiver side of things stabilizers you might already said it excel's got their stuff true ball excels they're releasing their new stabilizers uh, back in late November, early December, you know, they released their quick disconnect lineup, the front, the front disc, quick disconnect, the side quick disconnect, and then a the V-bar. Yeah. Uh, I'll be interested to get my hands on the sidebar and, you know, tinker with it a little bit. I'm trying oh, yeah. to think of who else. Stabilizer. I seen where Conquest is going to make a different size diameter um, control freak stabilizer. I can't remember what diameter, but it was in one of them emails. But I like looking at their stuff. They got some cool colors and some neat stuff going on. We touched um, on some releases, but we forgot. B3 come out with one called the Ghost. Yep. Uh, there's one that it looks like it's solid white. Yep. With the head and the thumb peg being black, I am really looking forward to putting my hands on that release because it's sharp looking. It's sharp. It is sharp. It's like a white, white button, yeah. but with a non glossy finish. Yeah. It looks neat. Why don't we go to the red lines all of a sudden? I don't know. I noticed that myself. I've never seen this particular thing before. We got, instead of like white lines in the middle and on the side, we got a red dotted line red solid line on the right. I guess because we're in road construction. I'm not in the fire lane. But uh what else? Bows we talked about releases accessory stuff like I hadn't heard anything about new shooting stools or release pouches or any of that type of stuff but I'm sure we'll see something. Yeah I can you know elevation came out they came out with a shooting stool last year. Uh I'm interested to see what kind of other tools are going to be there. Like, say if somebody comes out with a, a new, a new and improved bow vise. Yeah. You know, I'm I like the OMP vise. I like Butch Baker's vise. Yeah. Baker Archery product. Um, we've got both of those in the shop, and I'll use either one of them any day of the week. Oh yeah. Um, presses. Hadn't heard anything new on some presses or anything like that. There's always somebody there. I know that spike press is neat. I don't know that it's, I think, actually I think PSE may use them in their factory, but it's, uh, who 
makes that. Archery Tooling Company yeah. makes that. They got some neat stuff. They got a draw board. It's a little on the pricey side, but it is well made. Um, I like looking at his stuff. He's, he's, I like people that kind of think outside the box on stuff like that. Um, crossbows, I haven't heard a whole lot on. Um, you know, Bear, they come out with the Constrictor series and another one. We got some of those in the shop. They're pretty sweet looking. Yep. Uh, Raven, I'm curious to know. Yeah, Raven, I'm curious to know because, you know, they got pretty much any model from the R9 to the R29, and then the 26 is the little narrow and short and smaller, one. Smaller, yeah. Smaller, so. I don't know where else they can go except for maybe a hand, you know, a pistol grip style. I don't know. They uh, might make one that looks like a shot, sawed off shotgun. They might. Or shoot it from the hip. I don't, I think they're pushing the envelope a whole lot with what they got. So maybe, I know a lot of people are wishing they would move that crank and stuff. Maybe they'll redesign some of that stuff. Yeah. And that could be their new thing. I hadn't heard a word from them. I know 10 Point's got some nice crossbows coming out. Yeah. Um, I'm sure that other company, Randy Ireland's using... Uh, uh, axe bow, axe crossbow. I hadn't laid eyes on one of those yet. I want to look at those. Look at some deer scents. Yep. We tend to like the Black Widow scents. Uh, they've done us good. Yeah, they have. We'll get some of that coming for next year. And it's neat with them because they send us a fresh batch every year. So it's always fresh. It's never, what, what we have left over after hunting season, they let us send back. And then they exchange it for the new whatever 2020 stuff. So yep. it's never, you don't want your deer pee old. No. Musty smell. Nah, no musty smell boat. But, uh, I'm really, you know, just, and we don't carry a lot of these in the shops, in, in the shop, but I'm in, you know, the cellular trail cams yep. in the last couple of years have come down in price to where they can be affordable. Yep. And I'm really looking to see what they come out with this year. I don't know if they've already come out with some, but I'd be interested in looking at them you know, if there are some more that are under 150 bucks, then you know, if you know, if people come in the shop, you know, would it be something to carry in the shop that'd be a little bit different? Maybe and that's like rangefinders. Yep. I have carried some rangefinders in the shop before, and it's here's what I found out before. If I carried the El Cheapo, sorry, the radar detector's beeping. Uh, if I carried the El Cheapo, we sold a lot of them. But if I tried to carry a decent one what I would consider decent that works good on black targets and then low light, you know, that gets on up into a couple hundred dollars, we sit on that joker forever. Yep. So I don't know what the answer to that is, but I hate to not have range finders in the shop, but if we ain't gonna sell them, I don't want them sitting there. No. And I think the trail cameras may be something to look at as long as we can compete with Walmart and Dick's and Academy yeah. and all that crap so well I think you know I'm sure a lot of people will hear this from their local shops or whatnot they, okay. you know you hear a lot of talk about well I can't compete with Walmart and I can't compete with this and, that. and to a certain extent that is true yeah. as a small shop if Walmart can't which I know a lot of companies that sell to Walmart will tell them that you cannot sell this below a certain price. Below a certain price. Um, does Walmart, how well Walmart and them do that, I don't know. But as long, you know, and I really think that. This what, cat ain't got a tag on his car. Oh, Lord. No tag. Lost my train thought, but anyway, it's you know, for here, here's, an, here's an example of that. One year we carried knockout lighted knocks for the most part, had a decent experience with them until I walk into the Walmart one day and they've got them. And not only do they have them, but they got them on some red tag markdown about half of what I actually paid for them. Yeah, so luckily I didn't have a ton of them. The next year at the show, I made sure to go by the booth. I didn't want to be an asshole, but I let them know, hey. You know, we ordered a good bit of product from y'all last year, and we won't be doing that again because I walked into Walmart, and not only 
that they had me beat, but I mean, they had them, they were selling them for less than dealer cost, like half a dealer cost. And they said, oh, we're so sorry. They pretty much said, Walmart offered us a deal we couldn't refuse, you know, to order thousands and thousands of packs. We signed this agreement to where they could only sell them. They had to keep this price. And they said, they kept trying to jew us down on the price. So finally we told them to go screw themselves. And when they told them to go screw themselves, they took those thousands of knots and marked them down to way, way, way cheap. But then for the next whole year, they got them for cheaper than I can even buy them for. So I just kind of walked away from that deal, even though it was a decent knot. Yeah. But, uh, but a lot of these companies too will not sell to Walmart or- yeah. It's getting fewer and fewer. Yeah. But uh, a lot of it's pro shop only. And then, you know, like boat companies, Bear, for example, they got a legend series that they'll only sell to like me. They won't sell to a box store like Cabela's or nothing. It's only to a actual pro shop. Yeah. And that's, I appreciate that. But then they got the main mainline type bows and everybody can get them and me and Bass Pro and whatever. We're going through London, Kentucky where they have the ASA shoot. Yeah. Um, but anyway, I don't know. And targets, I think the only target thing was the that I seen was that 30 inch model of the Iron Man big shot targets yeah. coming out. So if you haven't if you haven't checked out any of the big shots, you need to, if you <clears throat> a local shop that's got some or if you got a buddy that's got one and you hadn't shot one, go get up about three feet from it and just fire. I mean if you got a cross if you got a Raven crossbow, go point blank with it. You can take two fingers and yeah, we it, sold. All we had to do was say either you shoot your bow into that right on it, or we'd walk around there with a 70 pound bow and say pull it out. They pull that thing out and be like, "How much is it? I want one." Yeah, I mean it's super. I mean we've got a guy bought two of the big the 24 inches last year, and from what I've understood from him is he's left them out in the weather and he said they're still holding up. Yeah, and as far as I know, he hasn't got any pass throughs on them. I wish somebody would bust open. I don't know what's in there. Yeah, I know. It's some sort of magical Martian dust or something. Yeah, it's some unicorn dust. Man, maybe some shit. <laughs> Comes out glittery. But, but that's that's a cool. That was probably our top new product of last year. Yeah. And it was a complete. John Partain called me last day of the show. We was about to walk out the door. He said, "Run over here to this booth. You about to shit." And they gave me. They handed me a bow. I shot it in there. Did the same demo. <laughs> And I was like, how much are they? <laughs> and they were they were affordable. And I was like, all right. So we ordered, I don't know, $2,000 worth of them, whatever it was. And then uh, we ran out in June, July. No, we didn't even make it to then. We got we got those targets in. I will never forget. They come in on an 18-wheeler. It was probably about If you've March. been to the shop, we're not really 18-wheeler compatible. <laughs> no. you got to park out on the road, and it's a small two-lane road. And then there's a gravel road that comes over to the shop so I, I remember I was in there with somebody and two people they were looking at a prime bow yep the guy called you know that morning was like hey I'm on the way just letting y'all know you and Blake Foster go out there in your truck and I look on I look out the front door and it looked like the Taliban was pulling up with armed fighters there was shit on the roof the back the front the hood it was bad I had her loaded down we did lose a couple bag targets along the way. We're going to double our order this year. Oh, so. Lord. Just let me know when they're coming. I'll bring the trailer. You might need to bring Big Blue. Well, Big Blue ain't in the best of conditions. <laughs> Maybe rest in peace. Oh, no, he's running. He's just, he ain't in the best of conditions. But, anyway, that was a good target. It was. And Even their bag targets is affordable and, you know, oh, they're yeah. real tough. So. Yeah. We'll get more of them. What had we talked about? We talked about stabilizers, bows, peeps, quivers, airs, broadheads, uh, bowstring material. I know BCY will be there. BCY is like the standard of bowstring material. Yeah. They make the, the best stuff, the best colors, good quality, never have many issues. Then you got Brownell who went out of business this year, but we got to looking at the ATA directory and they got a booth, so we clicked on it, and it looks like somebody has bought them out and is gonna do a relaunch here at the show. And Brownell has been around for a long time. Long time. Since like 18 something, making fishing, fishing nets and stuff, so 
I'm curious. I'm sure they'll probably have the same products. I'll just be curious to see how that turns out. And then you got the newcomer Bloodline, yep. who makes a non-waxed fiber that we played with a little bit last year. And they're also supposed to be coming out with some sort of a machine, some kind of serving machine or something. We need to look at the boa. Boa. Well, they come out with the python last year. So this year is the boa, so I'll be interested to see it. Um, what else? That's about it. I hadn't thought, I mean, I hadn't heard of anything else. It'll be all over Facebook this oh, week. Oh, yeah. And, you know, they also have what they call the innovation zone set up. And what the innovation zone is for new, new businesses that are coming into the market. And there's one out there. Bow Slingers, I think it's called. I seen that. I got an email from them, and they had a little picture of a guy climbing up a stand with his bow around his around his back, kind of like you would with a rifle, with a rifle sling. And that, you know, hence Bow Slingers. But um, our boys from Fobs gonna be here. Yeah, Fobs gonna be here. If you if you uh, have kept up with Fob or know what they are, it's a little. You don't put veins on the arrow, it's a little round thing that pops on the back. People love them, people hate them, but anyway, they they live, the boys that bought it last year, two years ago now, yeah. live in the same town we're in, so. I mean, you hope they do good, uh, but they they got a booth, so that'll be cool to yep. see them do good. And then, uh, who else, Bob? I had something else I was gonna talk about and I forgot about it already. Hey, when that happens. Yeah. Oh, the recurve shoot-off. Oh, yeah. Uh, Friday night, or Thursday night. Thursday night. They're going to have some sort of a event after the show ends. And it just said, like, world champion recurve archers are going to shoot off in front of everybody. And so I volunteered to put the apple on my head. <laughs> I'm kidding. I don't know what's going to happen, but I imagine if the way the email talk, I'm just guessing, like, Brady Ellison and all those caliper of people is going to be there to do some kind of a little demo thing and yeah. it'll be neat to watch. Yeah. I'll try to video it, get it on something. I don't know, I mean... We're going to a good steakhouse? A good burger joint? A good cheeseburger joint? I don't know where else. This place is huge. Big old place. It's uh, it's like two rooms, but I hate to call them rooms because they're so big. I mean, literally far as you can see is archery stuff yeah. and booths. Uh, Usually about 10,000 people there. You know, it's, it's big. It's a big old joke. Hard to describe or hard to compare it to anything. Yeah, I mean, we got a little Civic Center back home and it probably make 10 of them. Easy. Easy. Uh, you know, the convention center, there's so much stuff in downtown Indianapolis where it's at. I mean, you really don't have to leave the building. There's hotels connected. There's a four-story mall connected to it. We get pretty impressed because we just don't redneck. Oh yeah, fellas. But uh, I guess with it being up here, and it's, luckily we ain't gonna have no snow. It don't look like no. this time. I've been up here in three and four foot of snow before at this thing. But I guess when it's that bad during the winter, you need buildings that are all connected and that type yeah. of thing. So they got like the Lucas Oil Stadium, and it's connected to the convention center, and then like seven hotels. A big four-story mall, restaurants, out the ass. I mean, all kinds of stuff. Yeah, it's... And here's, you know, we want to say you need to check it out, but the ATA just don't let anybody in there. Um, you got to be an archer retailer, and you got to... People always ask, how do you get in? But you got to provide invoices of... I forget the number, like several thousand dollars of invoices to prove you're legit and a business license and this and that and the other and then you gotta pay an ATA membership fee and blah 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 so uh, there's a lot of talk about should they open it up to the public after the dealers I don't know if they should or not um, there's speculation both ways I, I don't see what it would hurt as long as they're not selling direct to a consumer as long as it's just a come see the new stuff show Yeah. you know I've always said I wonder what would happen if say it was opened up to dealers on Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and then maybe Saturday, Sunday to the public, to the public and then maybe the public pays a $10, $15 entry fee, you know, because the dealers, of course, we pay hundreds of dollars of membership fees, and that I'm sure some of that somehow goes towards the show, maybe a $10 to $20, $15, whatever, 
entry fee would help cover those two days for the consumer. I just wonder how many people, I mean, obviously from our neck of the woods, I doubt many people would drive nine hours to come see it. Yeah. But I would like to think within about a four to five hour radius, some people would want to come see some stuff. Or maybe they could start holding it. You know, Nashville to me was a good spot. Yeah. It's central. People up north can drive down, south and up. People can fly in, whatever. But maybe they can move it around more than they do. But I don't know if it's a good idea or not. I mean, I know the ultimate goal of this whole thing is just for it to be for retailers to order and get their stuff lined up for the year and not for the consumer. But I'm just thinking that what would it do as far as excitement of products and all that? Well, I, I agree with you. You know, and use it not to sell to the public. I would be okay with the with the vendors as long as they sold for retail. Yeah. You know, that would be where I would well, say. The reason I said that was it would just suck for us to go three days before and order thousands of dollars. I was going to say fifty thousand dollars of inventory, and then the consumer show up and just buy it from the booth. You know, like I say, we wouldn't probably get anybody from our neck of the woods, but shops around, you know, that would possibly sell the stuff they just ordered to these people, and they just go up there and buy it. I don't know. I don't know. I'm going to speculate, but yeah. I think there's a way it could work. I'm not 100% against it like some folks, but I'm not 100% for it either. I think there'd have to be some kind of ground rules and that type of thing. But no, there's going to have to be a meet in the middle of any sort, like yeah. you say. I mean, I didn't think about, you know, the shops ordering for the year but and you know if they didn't sell to the average joe that was there on the let's say an open weekend or a public weekend then yeah. you know that'd be fine too yeah. but at least you know in the in the best case scenario if you did open it to the public for two days you know they wouldn't they wouldn't have to drive to five different shops to shoot five different bows. That's true. You know, they could shoot all the bows. Yeah, up and say, all right, I want this bow. And then they just tell them, all right, well, your closest dealer is so-and-so, you know, and yep. they have to go there. That could work out good. I, I think that would be the best of both worlds. And, you know, it would probably drive some, you know, it would drive business to those shops, yep. I think. Um, you know. uh, it's, it's, it's up for debate. I think most shops would say no, they would not like to see that. And like I say, I think there'd have to be some strict rules. Yeah. You wouldn't want a booth unloading all their inventory on Sunday for half price to the consumer and it would really screw the shops in that area. Yeah. Um, or, you know, somebody might be buying it and throwing it on Amazon, that type of thing. So, yeah. I don't know. It probably, you probably won't see that, but it's something to talk about. Yeah, it is. Where are you going, Joker? Are you going over? Oh. Um, so far we've had good traveling here. Um, no crazy drivers, no real traffic. So that's a plus. It's about a nine hour ride for us from South Carolina up here. I would fly, but the dang flights are either super expensive or you gotta go from our closest airports, Greenville Spartanburg Airport, all the way down to Atlanta and wait a while and then get on Atlanta and drive and all the way up here. By the time I do all that crap, we can almost just be here in the car. So, TJ won't get on the airplane. Nope. I won't, uh, I'm going to get him on one one day. I'd like to get him on like a single prop. Prop, oh, prop, oh, oh. prop duster. <laughs> <laughs> the only way that's going to happen is I'm going to have to have some good stuff and a lot of alcoholic beverages. <laughs> we do that and you can fly it. But, uh, I don't know. They may not want me on the plane after that anywhere near. We'll put you under there with a the sheet. Nah, I just stick to the old car in the road. I know I've, I've always been funny that way. I've got, I'm not too terribly scared of heights, but I am scared of heights. Uh, about the highest I've been up in the air on solid platform was uh, my nanny and papa, we did a road trip right after I guess I was going into the seventh grade so however old 12 13 years old we went up the coast my papa was in the Navy so he took me up to where he was stationed at and everything in Norfolk Virginia and 
we kind of made a two-week road trip out of it. We stopped in Wilmington, North Carolina, and Cape Hatteras, and we went up in the, the lighthouse up there, and that was 330-some-odd feet, I think it was. And that's as high as I've ever been. And I don't plan on going no higher than that, because even at that distance up, Everybody looked like an ant down on the oh, bottom, yeah. so. I'd like to see that sky bridge in Gatlinburg. I'd like to cross that joker. But, uh. I'd probably do it, but I'd probably have to change my britches when I got <laughs> to the other side. Oh, man. So, like I said, I mean, you know, normal deer hunting, 17, 18, 19 feet, 20 feet, I'm good with. Don't really, don't really bother me. But I just ain't getting on no deck on airplane. If they'd fly direct, I, I would, and it wasn't a fortune. It'd be nice to hop on one for an hour and a half and be here, but it just, I don't know. We need to fly out to Vegas and shoot one year. That'd be a drive and a half. If we oh man, that. I know some. I know some people that drove straight to California and back. And it, I've heard people say they've done it in a week. Driving straight out there and straight back. That's great. I'd be ready to kill somebody. Um, Ooh, that's the plan. Yeah, but if you're gonna make that kind of a road trip, you might as well drive, you know, set aside because you know you're gonna hit some stops, oh, yeah. the Grand Canyon, and play it out. Play yeah. it out that way. But uh, anyway, so we headed to Indy. We'll be there tonight. Next couple days, we'll have these videos or podcasts, or whatever you want to call them, coming out. So scope them out. Let us know what you want us to look at. And uh, we'll do it. And then we'll have a big wrap-up one that'll come out next Wednesday. So we'll have a podcast out Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Friday, and then uh, Saturday. Saturday, morning. yeah, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. And then we'll have a wrap, a big wrap-up thing on. It'll come out next Wednesday, along with our normal tune-in and review videos on Sunday. So we got it'll be a big week for videos for us. Yep. Uh, but anyway, we'll get off here. Oh, we forgot. Hit the subscribe button down there. We're trying to get to a thousand subscribers. We were hoping to hit that mark before we come up here so we could go live on the mobile device. We're close. We're getting up around 900. That car has got to be drunk in front of us. He's all over the road. Got to be. Or but, somebody's naked in there. Uh, <laughs> Lower. But, but yeah, subscribe. Um, once we hit a thousand, we can do the same thing on. Uh, I thought I just took an exit. I think it's just splitting us up. It is. Um, once we hit a thousand, we can do. We could have done this live on YouTube. We can go live on YouTube now, but we got to be on a laptop with a webcam, and it looks like crap. So I'm just waiting until we hit a thousand to do it on a mobile phone, so it looks better, you know. But uh, and probably sound better. Yeah. And this may not sound great. We're in a dang car bouncing around with trucks and birds flying into us. <laughs> We're doing uh, about 120, but. Um, We'll see y'all tomorrow. Thank you for watching. Yep. Y'all have a good one. Take it easy. Well, hello. We have arrived in Indianapolis. Man. Wasn't a bad ride at all. No, it wasn't. It did take a little while. We're here. We got us into the place here. Went to the grocery store. Yep. Went through the hood. Well, I don't know if you'd really call it the hood or not. I mean, if it is, this is a high, a high class hood. We got shot at three times. <laughs> um, the only thing we got shot by was a daggum train that never would, that wouldn't hurry up. But anyway, we're here to update y'all, and uh, we got a couple more emails of products. But just want to let y'all know we made it. Yep. And look for our next one tomorrow. That's right. We'll be right here telling y'all all the good stuff. So y'all have a good one. Yep.